Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm gonna be now continuing the solar energy system design course part two. If you haven't watched my previous part one video where I where I discuss the solar energy basics foundation on uh, the relationship that the sun has uh, with the earth and <clears throat> how you can use the solar radiation uh, or the global horizontal irradiance to that is being, you know, uh, there's being uh, uh, absorbed, reflected, or diffused by the Earth's atmosphere, the clouds, uh, and then from using that uh, solar module uh, energy, uh, using that to to size the solar system, or the key points and formulas uh, to understand that. And then now in part two, today's video, or week two, I'm going to be covering the circuitry basics. So the connections uh, in series or parallel connection of solar modules, the uh, solar module specification. So the voltage, the, the current, uh, getting the overall idea of the power levels as well. And then from then on, we're going to see the, the relationship that it has towards um, how the how the solar module itself within the cells uh, operate whenever the sunlight energy hits the solar module so how we're we going to be uh, taking that into consideration there's going to be lots of theoretical knowledge in today's video and yeah so without further ado let's get into the video so as you can see uh, in this slide that you know the circuitry basics that we have when, whenever we're connecting solar modules whether in series or parallel uh, for series connection, we know that there is a single path of current flow and in that single path of current flow, the voltages add up and the current stays the same. Uh, and, and if you have three or four modules you know, connected in series, what happens is the total current being the same is going to be the lowest module output current chosen. This is uh, what I mentioned early on about the connection between series and parallel. So if you look at the top left hand side of the figure, PV panels in series. The connection is very simple. So if you have a, on the module one, the left, you have a negative terminal that is, you know, being connected to the negative terminal of the inverter, for example, and the right hand side, the positive terminal, connected to the positive terminal of the inverter. And in between them, the, the positive terminal is connected to the, to the negative terminal, and the positive terminal here connected to the negative terminal here. And then this is a series connection. If you move on, if you move on to the PV parallel uh, connection on the right hand side, so there all the negative terminals of the solar modules they're connected together uh, in a single wire black connection. You can see it joined together, and then that is then feeded into the negative terminal of the inverter, for example. And the same thing with the positive. So all the positive terminal of the solar modules one, two, and three connected together in the positive, and then is then joined with the positive terminal of the inverter. So that's the PV panels in parallel. Now, in the uh, in the PV panel series and parallel connection, you can have both. So on the left hand side, four panels. On the top, you can see positive with positive connection formed, and then on the bottom, you can see negative with negative terminal connection formed for the negative terminal. And then between those, you have a negative to positive, and then positive to negative. So that's a series with the parallel connection. And on the right hand side, same thing, but just a diff different layout. So you have a landscape one oriented solar modules and you have a portrait oriented solar modules. Uh, so that you can see the parallel connection, negative terminal with negative terminal joined together with a negative uh, output. And then you have a positive terminal, the positive terminal connection leading to the positive terminal. And in between those, you have negative to positive connection, negative to positive connection with a combination of series and parallel. Uh, you know, some people, they're confused as to whether you would like to have a series connection, parallel connection, or both, series and parallel. It depends It depends on your load requirements, on your energy consumption of your household, residential, commercial, uh, industrial applications, and whether if you have a higher voltage or a higher current needs to accommodate what type of connection you're going to have. So if you have a higher voltage, low current uh, energy consumption, then go for a series connection where you have a high voltage and low current. If you have a high, higher current with low voltage current requirements, then go for a parallel connection where you have a higher current, low voltage. 
but of course you have to you know obviously take care of the other requirements of the the, the sizing of the wiring and then the the the, the series connection the fuses as well of uh, the fuses that are being connected to make sure that you prevent any um, overheating or, or any firing that can be a co that can be caused you know so you know so this is some of the uh, typical layout configuration of the solar modules that is very standard and common uh, next in the next slide is the uh, the foundation of the solar module itself within that the solar cells that uh, are that are going through the working flow or the procedure of the solar cells within them so normally you have a band gap which is a uh, a junction a pn junction combination between the p type and the n type is basically the difference the energy difference between those two layers and I will explain that in the next slide with a figure I'll explain to you how it works but overall the current the amount of current that's being flown from the electrons to the load back to the uh, to the to the, to PF, to the PV circuit that determines about how much sunlight is being hitting on the solar cells so look at the if you look at the, dif the description here the figure you can see that the sunlight in the solar module the solar panels and if you look at the top uh, the thick part of the rectangular at the top which is which is the n-type material this consists of electrons and the, and the middle one you can see the red colored ribbon a uh, small rectangular ribbon pn junction that's the band gap uh, realistically and then at the bottom one is the p-type which is positive so if you look at here this, this overview of the electrons in the negative and then in the positive uh, p-type layer there's, a, there's holes and whenever there's sunlight hitting the solar module, what happens is the electrons flow out of the negative. So when they flow out of the negative, they leave or create a hole in the negative layer. And then when electrons then flow through the wires, to, through the load, and then it goes back to the P-type layer and the positive uh, layer. So then the electrons then uh, fill in that, that positive holes that are already in the in the p-tab layer because the p-tab layer is already positive has, it has holes in it so the electrons fill that gap but the electrons that are already originally having negative electrons they then leave from the negative uh, n-tab layer which creates a pole a uh, positive hole in the negative uh, n-tab layer and that energy transition the movement that goes internally from p-type to n-type by the electrons and how much difference it creates, was it a larger difference or, or a smaller difference in that band gap is essentially the energy difference, the, the, the cell voltage uh, that is flowing. And then uh, moving on to the electrical characteristics of the PV module and arrays. So if I have a solar module and you know I want to measure the power, so for example, to measuring the power of a single module that is not connected you know for example you want to measure the voltage outside the circuit use a voltmeter it will tell it will give you the voc voltage uh, level ratings and if you want to measure the current that is flowing inline electricity that is flowing through the circuit uh, that will flow through the meter then use the clamp meter the clamp meter will tell you how much current is flowing through the wires uh, voltage is actually inversely proportional to the temperature Inversely proportional means that if the temperature increases, right, during the summer the temperature goes high, the voltage will actually decrease, the voltage levels will decrease. And vice versa, if the temperature decreases during the, sum, during the winter temperatures, let's say if the temperature is minus 10, minus 15 degrees Celsius, the voltage levels are, is going to increase, or it's going to go higher and higher. Current, it's directly proportional with the solar radiation, the solar irradiance, or the intensity of the solar sunlight hitting the solar module so for example if, if you have lots of irradiance hitting the solar module so if you have a um, a current that you know that increases with the increase of solar radiance hitting on those solar modules and increases uh, with respect to that and it also decreases if there's a decrease in uh, solar radiance the intensity decreases of course so that's that's the direct uh, proportional relationship between current and irradiance inversely direct inversely proportional with voltage and temperature. A VOC, so that's the nameplate specifications as specifications that you would uh, see at the end of back of the solar module, the nameplate ratings. A VOC is open circuit voltage. It's the highest possible voltage with the current being zero at that point. 
and ISC, the short circuit current, is the highest possible current with the voltage being zero at that moment. And then Pmax or VM, PMPP is the maximum power point power. That is the measured power, which is multiplied multiplying voltage VMPP at maximum power with the current at maximum power IMPP. So um, if you look at the, the characteristics, the IV curve relationship, you can see that the red line, so the red line here, the IV curve, it shows that ISC, which is a short circuit current, the maximum because it's not being used, the current is at full potential maximum. And VOC, which is the open circuit voltage not being used, the theoretical uh, voltage, VOC. If you multiply VOC with ISC, you get the theoretical power at standard testing conditions when the solar modules are not in use, when they're not connected. And as, as you can see, the red dot here, VMPP, IMPP, uh, IMP. Now, if the solar module is connected is in use, what happens is the power, PMP, this blue line here, curve, the power from the solar cell, P is equal to V times I. So that power, maximum power, uh, Pmax, is, is the multiplication of VMP times IMP. And that gives you uh, a value around here. So this is what you can look at. Uh, and, and realistically, it's going to be lower, right? It's not going to be higher than the, the, the theoretical rated STC conditions as compared to the measured power output, VMP and IMP. If you look into more in detail, so uh, current on the left-hand side and the y-axis, voltage on the x-axis. If you look at the VMP, it's shorter than the VOC because the VOC open circuit voltage is the highest voltage possible, not being used. If you look at the red dotted line, if you follow that up, and it reaches here, this is the maximum power point, PMP, this is the maximum power point because you multiply VOC with the ISC, the ISC or the red dotted line, you follow that, maximum power point. Now, if you look at the IMP, so this is IMP shorter than, than, shorter than the ISC, and you look at the VMP, multiply them, you get the measured Pmax. And uh, the fill factor, fill factor is basically the solar cell, uh, fill factor, if you look at the fill factor, the orange box, is basically the solar cell performance, right? How, how effective the solar cell is. And to find that, you basically divide the measured power with the theoretical power. So the measured power is simply, we know the multiplication of voltage at maximum power, VMP, with the current at maximum power, IMP. And you divide that with the short circuit current, ISC, and the open circuit voltage, VOC, which gives you the theoretical power and you divide that to get the fill factor of the solar cell performance. This is the key formula that you guys need to know whenever it's calculating the solar panel efficiency. It is basically dividing the Pmax, the measured power, which is VMP times IMP. Divide that with the area of the solar module, normally whatever length times the width, the area, and then you multiply that with the uh, solar irradiance, irradiance at STC, which is 1000 watts per meter squared and then you multiply by 100 to get the percentage value. So if I say 300 watts of solar module, that's a power output Pmax, divide that with the area of a solar module for 300 watts, it's around 1.65 meters squared. For example, multiply that with 1000, so you get 1650, 300 divided by 1650 times 100, you get around 18.18% solar module efficiency. Of course, if you want higher efficiency, you can, with the same area, you can go for a higher rated power output, Pmax, of 350 watts, for example. Uh, and if you want the same efficiency, the same power with higher efficiency, 300 watts, uh, then you need 300 watts with lower surface area. So uh, you can say w w with 1.55 meters squared to improve the efficiency because there's a gaps, you know, in the solar cells being connected and then uh, how they're connected and constructed, the frame and whatnot. So that also reduces the area and, and how much efficiency, efficiency is going to be there. Uh, variations in productivity PV. So normally if the PV modules, they're shaded, right? If you connect them in series and they're shaded, the voltage will, levels will decrease. And what happens is the current will then absorb that shaded region which will then overheat or burn the module itself. So you don't want that hap want, you don't want that to happen. So in order to prevent that from happening, you would have a bypass diode that will be connected in parallels and in parallel. Uh, normally you would have two or three of those bypass diodes connected in parallel.
uh, to create two or three circuit segments to bypass or to find alternate routes so that the voltage will then well, it will decrease but then the current will stay the same so, so that will also uh, prevent you from overheating or burning down the, the solar module and each module I believe has two or three bypass diodes within the, within the, 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 the back sheet back side of the solar module itself uh, so that it can prevent that from happening whenever the, if there is a shading being happening so if you look at the, you know, the slide here, the, the bullet points, without bypass diodes, without bypass diodes, the cells would absorb the current, which would overheat or burn the panel, and the voltage level will decrease due to the number of cells removed from that segment because it's being shaded. So the voltage will decrease, but the current will now go down since the cells are wired in series. So they'll find an alternate route to not let the current being absorbed by the heat. A blocking diode is a different uh, case. You can have a blocking diode installed between. Uh, between solar modules at, at, in series so normally you would have a blocking blocking diode to prevent back feeding from solar modules uh, current back feeding into the solar modules at night when it's not working or for example when a battery is being there so that to prevent, to, to prevent battery uh, voltage or the current flowing into the solar module so you have a blocking diode at the end of the series connection you connect them in series and prevent them from uh, from entering the, the 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 reverse connection of the of the current flow and back feeding batteries that can occur if the battery voltage is more than the solar module voltage during the night or non operational times and then like i said bypass diodes are connected in parallel to either around the cells or modules blocking diodes are connected in series at the end of the series connection to re prevent reverse flow of the current during non operational times I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. If there's anything else you'd like to know about today's topic or today's video, do let me know in the comments down below. Until, until then, I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.